In this week's uh, Torah portion, Parshas Ekev, we have the mitzvah of mezuzah. Uchsaftam al mezuzah speisecha visharecha. You should write them on the doorposts of your homes and your gates. And we are. This uh, this is a two, uh, a combination of uh, talks that the Rebbe gave in 1967 and 1974, which were um, the concepts were put together in a uh, single. Uh, um, as a as a single talk, and the Rebbe edited, and it brings out the power of protection that we receive from the mitzvah observing the mitzvah of mezuzah. Uh, we we know that there are some mitzvahs in the Torah that when the Torah commands us regarding them, the Torah also offers what the reward for the mitzvah is. In other words, Hashem tells us that when you fulfill this mitzvah you get this reward. And mezuzah is one of those mitzvahs where it says, that you will increase your days um, and the days of your children by fulfilling the mitzvah of mezuzah, which sounds like a very beautiful reward. What is the purpose? And, and we actually also have mentioned in Shulchan Aruch, the Court of Jewish Law, anyone who is very scrupulous, who's, who, who's careful with the mitzvah of mezuzah, yarich yamav vanav. His days will be lengthened, and the days of his children will be lengthened. Now, um, one of um, what is the reason why? What is the purpose for the Torah mentioning a reward? Why would the Torah mention a, re- a reward? Uh, because a reward is a form of encouragement. It's it's a form of encouragement. It's an incentive for someone to do a mitzvah, um, and. Um, while, of course, we, we, the, 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 the highest form, the most complete way for one to do a mitzvah, to observe a mitzvah, is to do the mitzvah for the mitzvah itself. It, not to do something to get something, but to do something because it itself has value. But we have the idea of uh, reward because reward helps us. Sometimes we're not so, uh, we'll say, dedicated or so selfless to do it just for the, for, the, for the purpose itself. Hashem gives us reward understanding that. But there is something additional which, uh, which relates to the mitzvah of mezuzah, which is quite unique from other mitzvahs, in that um, there are other mitzvahs which God commands us to do and then tells us what the reward is. But when it comes to mezuzah, not only does God tell us the, the mitzvah and tell us what the reward is, that we'll have longer days, but addition, in addition to that, uh, we, are, we, learn, we are taught that putting up a mezuzah brings protection to the home. Now, this protection that comes with the mitzvah of, of mezuzah is not a reward that if you put up a mezuzah, I will protect you as if it's an extrinsic thing to the mitzvah itself, which is often what reward is. Even when the reward is associated you know, conceptually with the type of mitzvah you're doing, but it's still somewhat extrinsic to the actual mitzvah. But, the, but protection, on the other hand, is quite the opposite. It's intrinsic to the mitzvah. It's a benefit and gain that one gets from you happen to get from the actual mitzvah. In some way, you can say that just as someone eats food, the rabbi doesn't say this, I'm adding this. If someone eats food, then they feel satisfied. When someone puts up a mezuzah, the, the, the natural effect of the mezuzah is, is it creates protection. But the rabbi tells us that it goes beyond that. It, that um, so in other words, there's reward to the mitzvah of mezuzah. Then there is also a, a, a reality that is an outcome of the mitzvah of mezuzah, of putting mezuzahs on our doorposts, and that is that there is, we, we see that we all of a sudden have divine protection. But the protection is not even a, a, a side benefit. It is a part of the mitzvah. As Teisvis, who is one of the main commentators on Talmud, says, the Shimur of it, it is for protection. That is the mitzvah. And the mitzvah has put these mezuzahs up um, so that I may protect you by putting them up. That is, that is the mitzvah. And this is going to be significant in, in, uh, in, 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 the, uh, in, in, in the discussion that the Rebbe has about whether someone observes a mitzvah. And we, we know that there is observing the mitzvah lishma for the sake of the mitzvah itself, which is the purest form and the most complete and wholesome way of fulfilling a mitzvah. And then there's fulfilling a mitzvah shaloy lishma, not for my own agenda, my own benefit that I'm going to get out of it. You know, we can, ha- we can have a Shabbos dinner because... 
Um, God tells us that we should enjoy the Shabbos. So we have a Shabbos dinner. Or, and and uh, sometimes we have Shabbos dinner because it creates beautiful family time. So we dedicate, we, we, we dedicate ourselves to this mitzvah because now we have beautiful family time. Now, if we do it for beautiful family time, it's not for the sake of the mitzvah itself. We're still fulfilling the mitzvah, but it's not the purest form of fulfilling the mitzvah. Sometimes it's a combination of both. So, um, but when someone puts up a, a mezuzah for the sake of protection, are they doing it for an extrinsic, an extrinsic purpose? The, the point of the rabbi is that one is not. The rabbi is going to ask, uh, challenge this premise based on two teachings, one from the Torah Shulchan Aruch and one from the Rambam, and demonstrate how neither of them are actually challenging this idea at all. The mitzvah itself is actually um, the protection. Now, this is what makes the fulfillment of this mitzvah different uh, than most other mitzvahs, because the Talmud actually teaches us, a person should always engage in the study of Torah and observance of mitzvahs, even though it's not for the sake of the study itself and for the sake of the mitzvah itself, but because of other benefits we get from it. That's fine. Is what, what the Talmud is telling us is that we shouldn't wait until we are in a state of perfection to study Torah and fulfill mitzvahs, because the fact of the matter is, even if we're doing it for another reason, but we're we're still we're still doing something holy and something good, and and and, and very much good is coming out of it. Um, and in fact, we even offer reward. Um, Hashem offers reward to us explicitly, right? Which um, clearly is a, a demonstration that. We should do it even if it means we're doing it for the reward. And the Rambam actually writes very clearly that this should be the order of, um, uh, of developing um, ourselves to the, observ- to the study of Torah and observance of mitzvahs. That when we, uh, when we study with children and we encourage them to do mitzvahs, we should give them reward. That's how we start. As the child matures and gets older and appreciates uh, the, 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 the greatness of God and, uh, and that there is a higher value to life than the superficial values that the body recognizes. So then a person begins to do mitzvahs more lishma for the sake of the mitzvah itself. But until that point, do a shaloy lishma. That's fine. However, we also have to recognize that when we do a mitzvah that is not for the sake of the mitzvah itself, but it's also for some other fringe benefits or benefits or, or quality benefits that we get from the mitzvah, then it lacks wholesomeness. It, we cannot say that we're fulfilling the mitzvah in the most wholesome way possible because we're still doing it with what we can say is an agenda. Um, and, and the Talmud even says that when someone fulfills a mitzvah, um, lishma, for the sake of the mitzvah, and for their own benefit, in other words, I'm doing it because God commanded me to do it. And I also know that there are benefits I get from it. So I'm aware of that. And it says, for example, that someone says that, she, hey, yeah, that I will be a ben oilam ha, but I'll get a portion in the world to come. So while, um, while the, the, the person is doing the mitzvah for the sake of the mitzvah, but the fact that they also intend for themselves at the very same time, it does diminish somewhat from the wholesomeness, from the absolute purity of the mitzvah. And, and, and that... That is what it is. In other words, we're not saying this in, in a form of uh, criticism um, um, of that observance, but in, the, but in the form of awareness of what is available for us to grow with, in that it's not 100% wholesome. However, the person is 100% fulfilling the mitzvah. It's not even a question. Um, when it comes to mezuzah, though, here the Rebbe raises this point, that when a person puts up a mezuzah for the sake of protection, is that the same thing as doing a mitzvah for reward? And as I prefaced, the Rebbe's point is that it's not. Because the protection is the mitzvah itself. Again, as Tosfus says, Lishimar of it, that the whole mitzvah of mezuzah is to put up these mezuzahs so that they will protect you. That is the purpose of the mitzvah. So this is unique in that we can be doing the mitzvah of mezuzah for to get something, protection, because the whole purpose of the mitzvah is to get that. That is the mitzvah. To put this up to get that. Uh, to get the protection. Additionally, the Talmud tells us that, um, that when you position the mezuzah on an outside door, it, be, it should be positioned closer to the outside of the doorway. Why so? Because the purpose of the mitzvah is to provide protection from the outside. So therefore, so we see that the actual affixing, the actual action of the of, of fulfillment of the of the mitzvah requires that a person 
be um, do it in a way that is acknowledging protection. So if the action of the mitzvah is acknowledging protection, then surely I need to be aware of that in my mind. I have to be mindful of that when I'm putting up the mezuzah. So having in mind that I'm putting up this mezuzah for protection surely is then a part of the mitzvah. So this is the point that the Rebbe wants to establish, that when we do fulfill the mitzvah of mezuzah for the sake of protection, that's not extrinsic to the mitzvah, that is the mitzvah. And therefore it doesn't diminish from the mitzvah. And now the Rebbe, the Rebbe challenges this premise that he makes. And he says, but we can ask a question. In Tor Shulchan Arach, that's one of the codes of Jewish law, there are a few collections of code of Jewish law. Um, it says that when one puts a, when, when one fulfills a mitzvah mezuzah, his intention shouldn't be for anything other than to fulfill the mitzvah of Hashem. The only reason why a person should fulfill a mezuzah is to fulfill the commandment of Hashem. Now this sounds like, at first appearance, it sounds like he's trying to say, don't do it for any other reason. Possibly, one may think, even for protection. Put it up simply because God commanded you to do it. So the rabbi first says, firstly, it's clear that he doesn't forbid one from uh, fulfilling the mitzvah with another intention, such as protection. Um, and you can't forbid such an intention when we know, as we stated before, that the very action um, of the fulfillment requires one to be mindful and to actually do an action in which it will affix it closer to the outside of the outside doorway because of the point of protection. So clearly, um, that can't be a, 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 a um, something that would negate the fulfillment of the mitzvah. Uh, so, the, 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 so possibly one can say that he's saying that a higher form of doing the mitzvah is to do it with no other intention other than for the sake of the mitzvah. Um, um, and... Now, now um, however, the rabbi clarifies and says that he's not even saying that. He, um, there, being that protection is a part of the mitzvah itself. The, the, he's saying that when you fulfill a mitzvah, you should have in mind that even if I was not getting anything out of this, even if the mitzvah of mezuzah didn't, wasn't a mitzvah of protection, I would still fulfill it because it's the will of Hashem. So that was his, his point of saying that when your intention should be that I'm only doing it because it's the will of Hashem. Now it's the will of Hashem that I should pro- provide protection to myself, but even if I had no association with protection, I would still, still fulfill the mitzvah. Um, and even if someone fulfill, um, is fulfilling the mitzvah of mezuzah only for protection, they say, I'm not interested in the, I, I don't care about mitzvahs. God commanded me, it, that, doesn't, uh, that doesn't touch me, it's not, it's not significant to me. Right? I'm only putting it up because it's protection. But still, that would be a mitzvah, shiloy lishma, not for the sake of the mitzvah. When you, someone fulfills a mitzvah which is not for the sake of the mitzvah, have they fulfilled a mitzvah? Absolutely. In fact, the Talmud and Rambam encourage us to fulfill mitzvah shalei l'shema. And, and as the Talmud continues, um, which I may have not, not mentioned earlier, that, and, and the Mishnah uh, mentions, l'shema, that if someone engages in doing a mitzvah, not for the sake of heaven, with time, as the Rambam says, that's the process of development, that with time a person will then begin to appreciate the mitzvah for itself and begin to do the mitzvah for itself. But in other words, the main point that, 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 that the Rebbe is making is that the, the, the comment of the Torah Shulchan Aruch is not, uh, in, it does not in any way negate the idea that when someone fulfills the mitzvah of mezuzah, and they have in mind that it's providing them with protection, that in no way are they diminishing the mitzvah that they're doing. Now one can ask, the Rebbe now challenges this premise from the Rambam, from Maimonides, that the Rambam writes that someone, and I'm, I'm going to read the translation of what the Rambam writes, that someone who writes inside the mezuzah on the parchment when you uh, the, the the key to a mezuzah is the piece of parchment which has the two paragraphs of the shema so if someone writes on that parchment names of angels so then that person is among those who do not have a portion in the world to come that's a major statement it's a major statement to make the Rambam says that if someone writes names of angels in the mezuzah they, they don't have a portion in the world to come not only do these fools as the Rambam writes nullify the mitzvah but furthermore, they make from a great mitzvah, which reflects the unity of the name of the Holy One, blessed be He, the love, the love of Him and service of Him, they turn it into a talisman for their own benefit. They turn it into, in Hebrew, we call it a kamea. It's like a, a, magical, um, a magical piece of parchment that's supposed to create, a, you know, um, through, through some form of magic or mysticism, um, a, a good vibes for a person. So the person is taking a mitzvah 
and they're turning it into a talisman. So it seems, one may think, uh, that it seems from the Rambam, that if a person uses a mezuzah for their personal benefit, for a talisman, or for their own protection, then it's not just... Um, it's not just fulfilling the mitzvah, not for the sake of heaven, but even more so, he says it's foolishness and the person doesn't have a portion in the world to come. So maybe this is negating the premise that, that the Rebbe is saying that actual protection is actually a part of the mitzvah. So the Rebbe says the fact that the Rambam writes that, um, that, they, are, that they are nullifying a mitzvah, on what premise is the Rambam writing that they're nullifying a mitzvah? A very simple premise, because the Rambam writes earlier in the Laws of Mezuzah. This comment that we, I just read from the Rambam is from the Rambam's Laws on Mezuzah. And he makes a, a, a comment earlier on, which is a law regarding writing a mezuzah, that if even one additional letter is written in a mezuzah, it invalidates the mezuzah. That's why we get our mezuzahs checked from time to time. Because sometimes when scribes writing all day, you can make a mistake and, and omit a letter or, or add a letter by mistake. So we have a check. If there's one additional letter in the mezuzah, the mezuzah is invalid. It doesn't have the doesn't offer the protection that the mezuzah offers, and one doesn't fulfill the mitzvah. So if someone's writing names of angels, <laughs> they're writing far more than one letter. So that then that so now we're dealing with something which is a major Allah Hagish. We're not talking about the the reason why the person is putting up the mezuzah. Um, and that he that he's fulfilling the mitzvah because of its uh, protective values. We're talking about someone who's actually doesn't believe in the mezuzah itself, and therefore he's adding other things that he believes will then make the, the mezuzah powerful. So he is, in fact, invalidating. First of all, he's invalidating the mezuzah. The mezuzah is not kosher. And secondly, he's believing in his own foolishness and not believing in and trusting in Hashem's mitzvah, which is try the mezuzah exactly as Hashem says. Um, and that's why he says that it's a foolishness uh, for their own benefit. Because you can clearly see the way they're full, quote unquote, fulfilling the mitzvah, which they're not fulfilling because they've invalidated the mezuzah that they're doing it on their own terms, not on God's terms, in the way God instructs us to do it. Um, so we see that then neither the Tor, Shulchan Aruch, or the Rambam are really a, a, are in any way a conflict with this premise that the Rebbe establishes that the mezuzah is for protection. Um, and even the Rambam writes that one is allowed to say words of Torah for protection. Let's say someone feels endangered, so they want to say the Shema. They want to just say words of Torah. They want to read other words of Torah to bring a form of protection to themselves. Is there a problem with someone doing that? He says, no, there's no problem at all with someone doing that. So if someone can say words of Torah uh, for a form of protection, right? So there would be no issue with when the person is fulfilling a mitzvah that they're also doing it for protection. Um, again, the foolishness that... Um, it, 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 their fullest conception that the Rama is focusing on here is from the fact that they are adding angels to the mitzvah. Uh, and and that's, that's really the problem. But when a person f- uh, fulfills the mitzvah of mezuzah for protection, again, at worst, it would be a mitzvah shaloy lishma, it would be a mitzvah that's not for the sake of the mitzvah itself, which means it's not a complete, pure, and wholesome mitzvah, which is a very hard and, and, and high level for someone to achieve. And of course, it's a continuum where, where we can fulfill it more and more wholesomely. Um, but if a person fulfills it, the, the puts up a mitzvah, not only for protection, but also because it's a mitzvah of Hashem. In other words, he says, I'm putting up this, mitz- this mezuzah because it's a mitzvah of Hashem, which provides protection, because that is the mitzvah of mezuzah. Have they fulfilled the mitzvah 100%? And that would be a wholesome way. That's a mitzvah l'shma. In other words, if the, the only time it's shaloy l'shma, not for the sake of the, of the mitzvah, is if the person is doing it only for protection, not because it's a commandment from Hashem. But if they're doing it because it's a commandment from Hashem and offers protection, that is the mitzvah. So they're fulfilling the mitzvah in a wholesome way. So now knowing that protection is not reward for the mitzvah, it is the mitzvah, this will explain something very surprising that is associated with the mitzvah of mezuzah. In, in, in the Mishnah tractate Kalim. Now, Kalim means vessels or utensils. So there's an entire tractate about utensils and generally st- dealing with um, the state the utensils that, that contract um, spiritual impurity and how they are purified. So it lists vessels that are receptacles and can become impure. You see, in order for a vessel to, to, hal- to have a halachic uh, uh, Jewish law status of a vessel, and one um, is that once um, 
once it has a status of a vessel, a completed vessel, that's a usable vessel, then it can contract impurity. Something which is still in a raw state and has not been formed into something which is usable is not considered to be a, a vessel. And if it's not a vessel, it cannot contract spiritual impurity. So it discusses if someone has a stick that they carved into it, um, a, a, in the stick, they, they, or they carved out of the stick, the ability for the stick now to be an encasement to hold the mezuzah, what have they done? They've turned it into a, 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 a completed product, a finished vessel. So then it can contract impurity. That's what the Mishnah discusses. Now, we have a very interesting comment from one of the primary commentaries on Mishnah, known as the Teisvis Yamtiv, where the Teisvis Yamtiv says um, that, it, it, that he comments, uh, an unusual comment. He says it's possible from this that the Mishnah says that if someone carved out of a piece of wood an encasement from mezuzah, that it, it's now it's a vessel, that's possible that during the Mishnaic times when the Mishnah was written, they carried a mezuzah, people carried a mezuzah in, 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 in a wooden encasement, um, and considered it a mitzvah and protection. As he, he, he understands from the Mishnah that it seems that this encasement wasn't simply something that they put on the wall. It was actually something that they used to carry around the mezuzah with them. And that they would carry it around. Um, they considered it a mitzvah and protection. It's very interesting. And more, and, 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 and more so, we find in the Jerusalem Talmud, the Talmud Yerushalmi, that the mezuzah has a protective strength even when it's not being used as the mitzvah of putting it on your doorpost. How do we know that? So the Talmud Yerushalmi says, tells us that Rabbeinu HaKadosh, Rabbeinu HaKadosh was otherwise known as Rabbi Yehuda HaNasi, Rabbi Yehuda the Prince. He was the one who authored, who wrote down the entire Mishnah. Um, he lived uh, um, in the, uh, I, I believe it was the third century, uh, common era. And, um, and um, it was probably the second century, common era. And, and, he, and he sent the mezuzah to a, to a Gentile, but, uh, the, the Parthian king, Artabon. He, he sent a mezuzah to a Gentile king, the Parthian king, Artabon. And he said to him, this will protect you. And in fact, we even have documented how he immediately received a form of protection right after he got the mezuzah. So, which is uh, quite surprising. First of all, people who put mezuzah inside of a stick and carry the mezuzah around. Um... That's an unusual thing. We, you know, the mitzvah of mezuzah is to put it on the doorpost. And in fact, we know that the Talmud explicitly says that if someone hangs a mezuzah on a stick, that means instead of putting it onto your doorpost, you put it into a stick and you put the stick next to your doorpost, you have not fulfilled the mitzvah. Not only that, they call it a danger, not a protection. Why is it a danger? Because you don't have a mezuzah on your door. If a Jew doesn't have a mezuzah on the door, that leaves them vulnerable from an available protection. Right? It makes them vulnerable to available protection. So the Talmud says it's actually a danger. So um, since protection is connected to the actual mezuzah itself, which we learn from the Teisvis Yamtiv's comment, that people would walk around with a mezuzah. Why would people walk around with a mezuzah? And why would Rabbeinu HaKadosh send a mezuzah to the Parthian king who doesn't have a mitzvah, so he can't fulfill the mitzvah. It's not a commandment that was given to him by God. So he can't fulfill the mitzvah because the mezuzah inherently has um, a protective element to it, even prior to it being used as a mitzvah. That's how connected protection is with the mezuzah. Like they go hand in hand. You can't separate one from the other. And therefore, if someone fulfills the mitzvah of mezuzah with, for the purpose of the mitzvah and to provide protection, they're, they're simply fulfilling the mitzvah. So with this, the Rebbe explains a very, a very interesting and also unusual comment that the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, made um, in 1927 when he, when he was arrested by the Russian authorities and, 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 and imprisoned uh, and, and, and very much uh, um, 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 brutalized during his imprisonment until uh, um, uh, despite a, 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 a death sentence was uh, ended up being freed. Um, where, where when the Friedrich Rebbe came into the Russian prison, one of the, the great, the Friedrich Rebbe wrote, uh, wrote in great detail um, his, uh, his tribulations um, during his imprisonment, uh, which is very fascinating to read. And the Friedrich Rebbe writes that when he came in, so what, he, he, he describes how the, the, the prison is designed in such a manner that as you are introduced to the prison, as you immediately come into the prison, it's set up in a way of great intimidation. 
and that most people, by the time they, they, they reach the just being questioned with their general information, the intake, that they are trembling and terrified. And so the Friedrich Rebbe made it a great point of his not to succumb to and be overwhelmed by the uh, circumstances um, the, uh, that were on the ground, but to remain in touch with the awareness that God is always with him. So the Friedrich Rebbe, they asked the Friedrich Rebbe, do you know where you are? And, I, and possibly that was a question that they would ask prisoners uh, to, to assess how overwhelmed they already are from the, uh, from the environment um, that, 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 that uh, intimidates them. And the Friedrich Rebbe said, of course I know where I am. And the way he described where he was was very unusual. He said, I am in a place that is exempt from a mezuzah, like a barn or a bathroom. Because we know that a barn is a, is a hostel for animals. A bathroom is an impure place. Uh, so therefore, we don't put the, 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 the law is you don't put a mezuzah in such places, only in a, a, a dwelling place for, for, for people. Um, but why did he say such a strange thing? Um, yeah, I mean, there are many ways he can describe where he was. Why would he say um, a place that's exempt from a mezuzah? What was the emphasis? And we know that everything that, that a Rebbe says is very precise. Um, it, it's not random. Firstly, the question is, why did he refer to where he was in a negative form? That it is exempt from, right? Which is a negative form. It doesn't have to have. He could have said something that actually his mind, as he writes... He, worked, he was working very hard during that time to be focused on. And that is that the glory, that the, that the entire uh, universe is filled with the glory of God. And that, um, and that Hashem is constantly with him. And that he has nothing to fear. That those were the, and everything is by divine providence. Hashem has him here for a particular reason. That would have been a more positive. I mean, the place where God is constantly. So... Um, and specifically, if he wanted to show them, which the Friedrich Rebbe did, and he, and he writes in his writings, he wanted to show them that he's completely unaffected by all of their intimidation, then um, it, it would have been very powerful for, powerful for him to say that um, nothing exists by me other than God. I'm with God. You know, everything that's going on over here is, is uh, you know, just superficial. Uh, they're, they're all superficial things. So the Rebbe says, now we can understand why the, Rebbe, uh, why the Friedrich Rebbe said, this is a place which is exempt from a mezuzah. Because the Friedrich Rebbe wanted during that time to bring upon himself the protection of a mezuzah. So he wanted to create what we call a zecher, some form of association with mezuzah in that moment when he needed great protection. So he decided he's going to discuss the laws of a mezuzah. And in that way, he's in some way connecting with the laws of a mezuzah. And he did so by mentioning that this place is exempt from a mezuzah. And, and he did this for two reasons. Number one, we know that there's a concept called anyone that engages in the study of the laws of an Ola sacrifice, God considers it as if they brought the Ola sacrifice. What is this idea? This idea is that we don't have a temple today. So, if so, so how can we, um, in some form or way, at least in the spiritual form, um, fulfill the mitzvah of sacrifices? By learning. Um, and reading the laws of sacrifices is as if we, we, we brought them. So likewise, the free to grab right now um, could not, um, you know, in any way fulfill the mitzvah of mezuzah. And he wasn't in a place that was kosher to have a mezuzah. But by engaging in the study of mezuzah, he was now bringing, invoking, if you will, the power and protection of mezuzah upon himself. Um, likewise, sometimes the way we fulfill a certain mitzvah is by the fact that I know that I cannot fulfill this mitzvah here and I become aware of that. So I'm fulfilling the mitzvah of not doing it because the mitzvah is not to do it in such a place. And likewise, um, so likewise, that's why the Rebbe created the second point is, so the first point is by discussing the laws, it's as if you're fulfilling the mitzvah of not putting up mitzvah in the place where you're not supposed to put one up. And it created a negative connection meaning the connection to the mitzvah in this circumstance is by not doing the mitzvah. And, but he wanted to explicitly express that, that I'm, that I'm in a place where you cannot fulfill the mitzvah of mezuzah, so I'm not fulfilling the mitzvah of mezuzah. But in that way, he was bringing upon himself the uh, protection of the mezuzah. Because um, we know that there are two ways always of uh, associating with the mitzvah. In it, we call it chiyuvi and shlili. Chiyuvi means in a positive way, means in a forthcoming way, in a way of action, of doing, and then there's in the way of negating, of not doing. 
And in this case, it was in a way of not doing it, but that was the only way he was, he was able to fulfill, uh, associate with the mitzvah and therefore bring the protection upon himself. In fact, uh, the, in the footnote, um, um, the, the, the Rebbe comments said, it's also well known that the Friedrich Rebbe used to keep a mezuzah on his desk. Now, that's not the fulfillment of a mitzvah, of the mitzvah. The mitzvah is to put it on the doorway. But he would keep the mezuzah on his desk because of the, as we understand anyway, that we would assume that the reason why is because a mezuzah, just the mere presence of a mezuzah, just like we learned earlier, Rabbi Enoch Kadr sent it to a Gentile king. The mere mezuzah is an element that brings protection. Protection is a part of the, uh, a mezuzah. So the Rebbe concludes by saying that from all of this, we understand the great importance of one of the 10 mitzvah campaigns that the Rebbe initiated, which was the Mifsa mezuzah, the campaign of mezuzah. This is different than the word mitzvah. This word is mivtsa. Mivtsa is a campaign of mezuzah. That is to that that we that we should do our best to ensure that every Jewish home um, has a kosher mezuzah on every doorpost in the home that requires a mezuzah. And the rabbi explained that Jews are like one sheep among seventy wolves. This the midrash refers to as an analogy that the Jewish people like being like one sheep among seventy wolves. That sheep's gonna have a hard time surviving. So how do we survive? We survive because we have the help from our shepherd, Almighty God. That's how we survived and we survive eternally because Hashem is always with us. And then the Rebbe made reference um, to a recent and um, a horrific terrorist attack that occurred in Israel in 1974 um, in Ma'alot, in, the, in northern Israel, where um, uh, tragically um, a, a large number of students were murdered by terrorists in addition to other um, uh, teachers and others that were murdered by terrorists. Um, um, and it was a terrible, terrible tragedy. Many were injured as well. And they, they discovered after the event that all of the doors, I believe it was the doors in the school, um, the, the mezuzahs were not kosher. And, and, and interestingly enough, the exact number of students killed uh, was the same number of mezuzahs that were not kosher. So the Rebbe, sa- so the Rebbe said that they were lacking extra protection. Now, the Rebbe was very clear about emphasizing, the Rebbe spoke about this a few times during that time period, and the Rebbe said, it's not, God forbid, to, to, that one should think that because someone doesn't fulfill a mitzvah mezuzah, some tragedy will befall them. God forbid. Hashem loves his people. It's that, it's just like a soldier. If a soldier goes out to the battlefield, and but they take off their helmet, they simply removed an element of protection that they have, which is not a wise thing to do. So likewise, as a Jewish people, we have it. We have elements of protection. We have helmets that we can put on, which are spiritual helmets, of course. And one of them is a mezuzah. Unfortunately, this extra protection wasn't there. And had it been there, possibly, possibly that would have given them the protection they needed. We don't know, right? But possibly that would have given them the protection. And the point is that we want to uh, carry every element of protection that we have. So, um, so the rabbi said, in light of this recent incident. And um, the, the mezuzahs that were lacking, they lack the extra protection. And we have to remind ourselves that God gave us a unique form of protection. And we should do our best to make sure that we're wearing our helmets, so to speak, that, we're, that, we're, that, we're in, uh, that we have the um, mezuzahs on our doors. And therefore, we must make the greatest effort that every Jewish home has a mezuzah on every doorway. And this is a mitzvah, the rabbi says, for men and for women. It's not a mitzvah just for, for, for men. Uh, women are all, uh, men and women are both equally obligated in this mitzvah, and that through this protection on on one's house, um, uh, through this protection, it will bring protection on one's house, and it will also bring protection on all the people who live in the house. As the Zohar says, that even when we leave our home, we are still protected because we have a mezuzah on our home. Now, in other words, the mezuzah protects the people who live in that home, not just the home, which means a person could travel 100 miles away or 1,000 miles away or 10,000 miles away and the mezuzah on their home is still providing protection for them. And being that we are one organism, the Jewish people are one organism, so when every one of us adds more mezuzahs, um, when there are more mezuzahs added to Jewish homes, that adds greater protection to the entire nation. And again, the rebel is speaking in light of this terrorist attack. So when you and I make sure we have kosher mezuzahs on our doorway and we make sure we have a Jewish neighbor, we encourage them to put mezuzahs on their doorways as well, we are actually bringing more protection to the entire Jewish people, being that we're one organism, and now we have added more protection. And, uh, and he concludes by saying, as, as the Pasuk says, Hashem yishmar tzeis chaveyecha miyat v'adolam, uh, that Hashem should, um, should watch and protect your goings and comings from now and for eternity, that so may that be 
through us fulfilling the mitzvah of mezuzah.